Hi, I'm Chris from Theme Park to Table, cooking up theme park recipes here in my own kitchen. Today we're going to be working on a recipe for poisoned apples. I wanted to go a little seasonal with this one since we're into the spooky season. This recipe we're actually taking from the new Disney Villains cookbook. It's on page 97. So let's get started. We're starting off with six apples. They say either Granny Smith or Golden. We went with a golden variety. The first thing we have to do is actually core these apples. So there's a couple of different ways we can do this. If you have an apple core that actually will core your apples without going all the way down to the bottom of your apple and putting a hole in the bottom, that is probably the easiest way to do this. I, however, do not have an apple core that does that. So we're gonna use a combination of a knife, a spoon, a melon baller, whatever else I can kind of shove in there that's gonna work to get the job done. So we're just gonna kind of scoop, and I'll show you when I'm done, all the way down until so you can not see the core anymore. The core kind of looks like a star in the center of the apple. If you look at this piece, you can kind of see the star I'm talking about. So what you're looking for when you finish coring your apple is to have that star completely gone out of the bottom of the apple, but still enough flesh so that when I actually bake this, it's not gonna just all ooze out the bottom. So that's number one of six. So let's move on to the second one. Now this recipe, I particularly love caramel apples. They're kind of one of my favorite things in the fall. Um, my kids also love them. And they're not always easy to make. This recipe I'm looking forward to because it's kind of nice because it's, it's a poison apple, but it's also a baked apple with filling, which I think is gonna make them a little healthier a little less coyly sweet because you're just going to be topping it with the caramel sauce and maybe a little easier to eat. So once again, we're going to go all the way down to the bottom. We've got that star out and we're going to put that one in there. Um, this recipe also calls for to bake them in a baking sheet. They said, I'll look for apples with a, flat, with a flat bottom so that they stand up well. I find, for my personal use, that I prefer to put my apples in an oversized muffin tin because that actually keeps the apples standing up straight. And it's not always easy in the grocery store to figure out which apples are gonna stand nice and which ones aren't. Especially in COVID times, um, I know the grocery stores I shop at really prefer you not to be picking up a ton of apples. If you pick it up, they kind of want you to buy it. They don't want you just touching everything. And there isn't really a flat surface where you can go through apples in a bin and kind of stand them up and see what's gonna stand right and what isn't. And this way, if you have apples that are a little lopsided or funny, it's not gonna make as big of a difference. Okay, we're on to number four. Okay. So, now when you go to Disney, they have some of the best caramel and candy apples I think you'll ever find. And a tip that we learned about a few trips ago now that we had no idea is a lot of the confectionaries in Disney, if you buy a couple of the caramel apples, they will actually slice the apples for you. So if you have a family like we do, a big family of five, we can buy a couple different varieties, stuff that we all want to taste, have them sliced, and we can share them. And not only is it nice because you're not trying to bite into this massive caramel sticky apple that's melting as fast as you can eat it, um, but you can actually share with your family members too. We've only got a couple more left. We're almost there with this. Let's get that star out of there. Make one more scoop in this one and we're probably good. There we go. And on to our last apple. Like I said, an apple core probably would make this job a lot faster. This isn't too bad though. This is working out pretty well. This is how I typically core apples for baked apples. My family is a huge fan of, just, fan of just regular baked apples, and it's something I do make for dinner a lot in the fall when apples are in season. Um, and the part of the country where I live, we have lots of orchards, so we can actually go pick apples and get fresh apples, and there's nothing quite like it. So there we have it. There's all six. I'm just going to get rid of my cores in here, and those will actually make their way outside into the compost bin. So they too won't go to waste. I'm gonna grab my 
bowl, butter that I've softened, and we're gonna make the filling for these apples. Um, I should mention, I do have my oven preheating to 375 degrees. It's ready to go, as always. I started that before we started, so we wouldn't have to wait on that. To my butter, I'm adding brown sugar, ground ginger, ground cinnamon, and pecans, or pecans, however you say it. And now we're just gonna kinda mash all this stuff together. I'm gonna try to use a spoon. Um, in the recipe book, it actually says you might have to get in with your hands to kinda get it all mashed up. But that makes a huge mess, so we're gonna try and see if we can get the spoon to actually do the job. The butter has been out for a couple of hours now, so it is definitely softened, but I'm really not sure that this is gonna happen, so. But I'm not giving up yet. Okay. Now, I just don't think that butter's gonna break down the way we want, so. Hands it is. So we're just gonna get in, I'm just gonna kinda mash it all together. I did wash my hands before I started, <laughs> started cooking this recipe. Uh, if you've watched any other recipes, you know that I pretty much constantly wash my hands. So my hands are clean. Um, we're just going to kind of get this all mashed together. Going to be similar to like an apple, an apple crisp consistency without the oatmeal. So we just want it all well mixed. That looks pretty good. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this. And we're gonna evenly distribute it and we're gonna stuff it right into the apples. I'm just gonna kind of make it into little balls. We can always come back after and add more into the apples if we need to, but I wanna make sure everybody gets some before we start adding extra. And this stuff is gonna go everywhere. We all know that cooking with Chris is never clean or neat. So we're gonna fill these guys up as full as we can get them. I'm gonna go back through now and make sure that they're all nice and filled. Make sure my apples are standing upright. There we go. One's a little underfilled. Looks like the filling is gonna be just about spot on, even with the mess I made. I am gonna just try to clean up a little bit around the edges of the pan. So when that bakes, it doesn't burn. Because burnt sugar is not fun to clean and does not smell nice when it's actually cooking. I'll give my hands a quick rinse and we're gonna put these into the oven. So these apples are going to go in. They're going to take about 50 to 60 minutes to bake, depending on the size of the apple and even the brand that you grabbed. So once we get these apples in the oven, we're going to take a break and I'm going to meet you guys back here as soon as they're done. So here we go. Apples in. Timer set. We're going to start at 50. And I will check them then and good to go. So I will see you back here in about an hour. Hi, I'm Chris and welcome back. We're gonna continue working on our poison apples. Um, as you'll see, the apples are actually out of the oven. We're gonna start the caramel sauce right now. We're gonna talk all about the apples because the apples are a whole thing. So come right over here and we're gonna get this butter in here. We're gonna turn it on to about a medium high we're going to throw some brown sugar in and some heavy cream. And then we have to bring all of this together and we have to bring this up to a boil. And then when it hits a boil, we have to simmer it for five minutes. So while I'm stirring this, let's talk about the apples behind me. So first off, lessons learned. About 10 to 15 minutes in, I started hearing splatting noises from the apples. And I opened the oven and discovered the apples were actually cooking over and spilling into the bottom of the oven. 
So I lined a baking sheet and put the apples on top of the baking sheet to stop from the catastrophe in the oven of smoking and trying not to set off my smoke alarm in my house. Second apple issue. So about 30 to 35 minutes, I decided just to take a peek at them and the apples are way done. They're overdone. They're kind of smushy for the most part. They're falling apart. So I pulled the apples out of the oven and set them to the side before I came back to you because I didn't want to leave them in there for a second longer. So I apologize for pulling the apples before you're back with us, but the apples did not need any more heat. So that's the apple update. Um, moral to the story, I would say if you're going to do them in the, in the baking pans, which I still recommend, make sure you put a bigger pan underneath them and definitely reduce your cooking time. The res recipe calls for 50 to 60 minutes. And like I said, I would start checking them probably closer to half an hour because mine were done way faster than that. And my oven tends to run right about where it's supposed to run. My oven is not an oven that runs super hot. Okay, so back to the next part of this. Caramel sauce, the, the poison sauce for the apples. We've got the sugar has combined with the cream. The butter is melting. The butter was room temperature. I just plopped in the pan before we started so I could wash my hands after because I always get butter all over myself when I'm trying to wash them. And this we need to let go until it comes to a boil. When it comes to a boil, we are going to reduce it down and then we have to simmer it, excuse me, stirring occasionally for about five minutes. So we're gonna just get this going. I'd be curious if anybody else has tried this recipe and if they had a similar issue with the apples, if they had a trick that maybe worked better for them than what I did, definitely post below. So this is starting to look a lot like a caramel sauce. It certainly smells like caramel. It's got that nice sugary smell and the butter melted in. So while we sit here, I'm just gonna keep stirring and I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this come to a boil. If you look, it's actually coming up to a boil right now. So we've got a boil going on this. If you give it a stir, you can actually hear the, the bubbles boiling. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my heat down. I'm gonna let it simmer. I'm gonna give it the five minutes until it thickens. And when it's nice and thick, I'll see you back here for the next step. Welcome back. So our caramel sauce has been simmering for just about exactly five minutes. Want to get a look at it. It kind of coats the back of the spoon. It's a golden brown. It's looking good. So we're going to turn off the heat and put it here. Now to it, we're going to add vanilla, salt, and then some green food coloring to make it spooky and look like poison. Couple drops of that in there. We'll give that a mix in. Now the food coloring is just for show. So if you're somebody who is food color sensitive or have some in your family who is, by all means, you don't have to add the food coloring to this, but it is gonna make it look a bit more poisoned and haunted. Okay, we're gonna move the caramel back over to the table with our apples. I am going to try to get one of these apples out of here without completely destroying it. I think this apple up here looks the best out of all of them. So we're gonna see if we can get a spoon underneath, scoop them up and get them in the bowl. Well, there he is, he came out, which is good. I wasn't so sure how well that was gonna work. Okay, so now we're gonna bring him over here and we're gonna give him some poison sauce. I mean, I suppose if you're looking for a haunted treat, the fact that they're falling apart makes them look a bit more wicked. So let's give this a nice drizzle of our green caramel sauce. And there you have it, a poison apple. Thank you for joining me today. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe. And until next time.